Hi, Lauren. Welcome to the Empower From Within podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for having me. Yes, you're welcome. Like like I was telling you before we hit record that when I saw your book at the Bodhi Tree here in Timmins, I was like immediately captivated. I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to talk to this girl. Uh, so I'm really so excited to have you on the show today. Um, for everyone listening, your book is called Caress the Stress, and we're going to be talking about your journey today in really becoming the mental health advocate that you are, the creative, and working towards becoming a drama therapist. So mm. do you want to tell us a little bit about your journey as to what led you to all of this today? So when I was younger, I struggled a lot with anxiety um, and then in my teen years uh, with depression. Um, so kind of within my teen years, I was starting to think of like what I wanted to do for my career and like where I wanted to go to university. Um, so I was like, oh, like psychology would be cool so I can learn more about w what's going on in my head and then also how I can help others go through it afterwards, eventually in the future. Um, so it really started from a place where I was curious. I want to learn more of how to help myself so I can help others. So with that, like I've done a lot of things like kind of related to the field, even before I like finished my university. Um, so like my co-ops I did, I was working with adults with disabilities. I've done, I've worked with indigenous youth at summer camps. And then now I'm working with women who, um, have gone through violence and abuse. So all of these different areas, all different groups of people would benefit from a healing that isn't traditional. I find a, like, even for myself, like tr traditional therapy helped me a little bit, but it wasn't enough. I needed something further for myself. So for me being a creative person, like I dabble in many, many different art forms and throughout all of these different arts that I, I, I like to partake in, uh, it has helped me. And in high school, when I started doing theater, I went from the kid who would freeze in front of the class and start crying because I couldn't continue my presentation to the kid that would present a, a play in front of the entire school. Um, and like with that shift within four years, it was like, it made me realize just how much the arts and alternative healing methods really helped me. So I think that's what sparked really um, like my career choice and uh, where like why I wanted to take psychology and theater in university, pursue and, and doing my own workshops as well on the side. Like I've done a clown workshop, uh, I've done a theater workshops. So and that's just the beginning. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. 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 I mean, that's amazing. I think it speaks so much that like when you say you're, you want to help people with something that you went through, right? Like, and I really feel it's like the healer's journey when you can take the challenges that you have had in life, overcome it, and now take it almost like upon yourself to help lead others through something similar and really to help like in a way, like minimize that suffering so that people don't have to go through like the extents of what you felt. And so I think that's so beautiful. So can you tell us a little bit more about the book and maybe tell us where did the name come from? Caress the stress. I really love that. Thank you. I'll start off when I was younger. I never thought I would write a book. I was always like super hard on myself. I can't put my thoughts into a straight, um, like into a sentence without going off topic or and even doing a podcast now is just like younger me would be in awe um mm -hmm. but I, I took a course through Udemy which is uh like an online platform it's really cheap courses and when I finished my undergrad I was like I need to keep learning because I can't not do anything again with the idea of worth uh, if I'm not mm -hmm. in school learning I'm not worthy so mm -hmm. um so that was the start of the journey with the book. This course was art therapy workshop and write a book. Um, so I had the option of doing either or. I did both, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So through this, we like went through different ways to release stress. And then we had a task to then ourselves find ways and explore different things and then write about our experience with that. So like every week we had like 10 things that we had to try out. So I had written everything down and in my place of work now, um, I created a workshop with everything that I learned from this course. Um, and when we advertise our workshops with our clients, we have like a name for it. We have put a poster out. So it first started, I, I was trying to find something that rhymed with stress because I like things like systemic mm-hmm. <laughs> or not systemic, but, um, <laughs> symmetrical, sorry. Things that rhyme and puns and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. I was, and it's in French. So I was looking for something mm-hmm. that rhymed with stress, which in French is pretty much the same thing, stress. Right. And the word caress is also French, caress. So the workshop title was caress de stress. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that could work for the title of the book that I'm going to write. So I just carried it on and it works for both French and English. So it's perfect because I'm going to be, or I'm working on the French translation of my book. Okay. Very cool. I could totally relate to you with like the puns and needing everything to like rhyme and be cute. Like that's how I stay motivated in business. Like it has to be Mm -hmm. mindful Monday, wisdom Wednesday, like otherwise I'm not motivated to share. So we totally yeah. get that. <laughs> and I, I, I love the idea of like caress because I feel like it's almost like like befriending the stress mm-hmm. because it's kind of just telling, like giving us feedback. Like it's almost like our body's way of talking to us. Like what did you work on in the in the workshops? And did it have that feel of really just getting people like I want to hug now, but like, you know, just to like accept the stress mm-hmm. that they're in as opposed to being resistant to it. Like what, what were you sharing in the workshop? If you don't mind. No, absolutely. It, it and you're completely correct. Uh, that there was the intention of like, stress is not all inherently bad, right? Everyone has stress. It is normal to have stress. It's stress is what motivates us to do something. So of course there's good, and um good there's the normal good stress you know like the stress of oh i'm gonna have um a presentation later today and i'm stressed for that or i'm stressed because i'm moving all these are good stresses it's normal a person who who goes through change is going to live stress um so just kind of normalizing that and then uh like it's not bad that you have stress and then there's the all like the other spectrum of it where there's like post traumatic stress where it affects your day to day living. Um, something that you know you live flashbacks. You're you're in a constant state of alert, and people think and see that as bad. But I try not to see it as bad, but more as our mind and body are trying to protect us. Um, and if you understand that, then it'll be easier to kind of move through it when you put shame and guilt on feeling these stresses, you're going to be more stressed. But if you can say, I'm stressed because of this, and I know that it has to do with this and this and this, then you can accept it more and be more prepared to move on to the next step, which is dealing with the stress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Do you mind sharing? Um, I know you have your book with you. Do you mind like lifting up your book for everybody yes. on video? Because I'd love to for them to see the cover. Because I do love the cover too. Like it's beautiful. Um, Thank you. Who designed it? So I actually used Canva to design oh, okay. my books. Well, there we have it. <laughs> yeah, they, they have a bunch of designs and um, I was able to create it with that. But the design actually reminded me of a drawing that I had created again when I was in high school um, when I was just unknowingly doing art therapy <laughs> right right um, yeah so that's I what like, I was gonna say that's that's a form of art therapy isn't it <laughs> yeah absolutely so it kind of it reminded me so much of how I was feeling back then how I feel when I'm super stressed now and it's like a big tangle of knots you don't know which way to go 
um, it's all messed up. And there's so many things going on in your head um, that you don't, again, where do I go from here? So mm -hmm. the idea of like having all this like ball of knots and of things happening in your head. And then also just like the caressing hands, it kind of went perfectly with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it did for sure. Yeah, no, I love it. And I, I love the colors. Like, like I said, it like captivated my attention right away. I think it's so beautiful. And okay. So the drawing, that's a form of art therapy. Is that included in the book? <laughs> so when people think of art therapy, people automatically go to drawing your emotions which is absolutely part of art therapy, but it's not all of it. It's, there's other ways to do it. So I kind of, not skip that, but I didn't put it in my book where, okay, draw how you're feeling now. It's very vague, people aren't motivated to do it. So I put more specific techniques, more specific art therapy techniques. Um, so one of them is creating a Mandela. And the first Mandela is you put everything that stresses you in this. And it's like the circles that kind of interlock. Right. Um, okay. So put in these circles, everything that stresses you. And then you can write it on the side. You can draw it. You can put symbols, however you want to draw it. And then you're going to like fold it where, and then we'll do it again. We'll do a second exercise with the Mandela. And then this one, it's draw everything of how you deal with stress or how you feel better, what makes you feel good. So there's the two sides. There's everything that's super stressful. And then, okay, everything that helps. And it's kind of the two, the two perspectives. Do you want to focus on everything that's stressing you? Or do you want to work on the things that could help you move through this? So that's just an example, but it, it's more... Uh, specific art therapy techniques that kind of works through your stress and your emotions in a way that captivates you that's different than just draw how you're feeling mm -hmm. and there, there's that again there's that notion even like with meditation or journaling people are like oh well I can't do it because I can't write for so long or I can't do it because I can't sit still and not think of anything it's like okay but there's more, there's more ways you can adapt how you do it, which is, again, one of the big things that I'm, I'm for is adapting a task that fits for you mm -hmm. or so it fits for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I love the way that you're thinking about this. And because do you find that some people could feel so like detached from their feelings and emotions that you're right. The mind kind of just goes blank when you're like, draw about it. And you're like, but wait, how do I even feel right now? Like, how do mm -hmm. I do that? And so, yeah, again, it's kind of like put it in the box, like draw this, but giving different activities. So for the Mandela, the one that is full of the stress and mm -hmm. then you have the flip side, like, what do you do with that stress side after? Do you just so, have like both sides or is there? A yeah. Technique? So I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. <laughs> I put like images okay. to kind of show. Yeah. Um, but in this one, there's a smaller one. There's not as many circles. And it's everything that I put in that stresses me. And then on the other side, it's everything that helps me. And there's more options on mm -hmm. the helpful on the helpful side. Um, and it, I think just putting it down on paper or like visualizing your stress really puts into perspective uh, alongside, sorry, with everything that helps, puts in perspective okay, yes, it's stressful, that's totally valid, but I have all these tools that can help me. And you might find that you have more tools than you do stressors. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're focusing so much on the stress, you forget and you omit everything that you've learned, you forget that you have all these things that could help you. Um, so it's, it's, again, for me, I, I like visualization where you can see and it puts, paints a picture of what you're living and then also how you can move through that. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it helps to see it too, instead of having it all stuck in the mind, which also comes back to the cover with all the knots. It, <laughs> when it's just stuck in your mind, you don't know where to go. It's bouncing back and forth in there, but not going anywhere. But once it's out on paper, you could 
better analyze the situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I was just having a conversation with someone this week too about like, uh, or and I posted it on my my Instagram stories, but just how sometimes we get so caught up that we don't even realize how far we've come, right? We get so caught up in like this current problem, but then when we like take a step back, look how far we come, we're like, oh my God, like I do have all of the tools in the toolbox. And so I think it's an incredible real like physical for us to really look at because Mm -hmm. like even the picture in the book like there were so much more positive things and I feel like that alone could totally like shift and maybe like not completely get rid of but at least have a huge sense of relief in that moment for recognizing just how much you do have and how much like positive things there are Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. Is there another, like, are there some other um, activities in the book? So that was the mandala. So you, you have art therapies. Like, what are some other activities in there? Uh, let me see here. So the, I have, like, there there is a few different ones. Um, one of them is tactile drawing. So you're holding, I don't know, uh, I'm holding a, a Sharpie highlighter. And I close my eyes and I have to draw it. And this one isn't inherently talking about your emotions, but it's connecting you to your body. Mm -hmm. So while you're sitting there, you're closing your eyes and you have to draw what you're feeling in your hand without looking at it. And then Mm -hmm. drawing with your eyes closed. It brings back that connection from your body to your mind um, while you're doing it. Uh, there's another one um, where we look at different aspects of a life and kind of do like a vision board with it, which a lot of people are uh, familiar with vision boards. You put your goals, your dreams, what you want to accomplish. But this one, it, it kind of goes more into, into depth. So you have like the wealth side. So money, yeah, like you, everyone wants to make more money. <laughs> there's the health side. Everyone wants to get fit. But then there's also the love and that's not just love with others but with yourself and then also self-expression so all these things are being put on this vision board that you're going to create instead of just the material things or the things that society says you need to be happy there's one i have a guided meditation art so this one i have actually have a link for a youtube video that i made um, where i guide you through the meditation i also have the like the steps in the book if you can't access the video link but it's kind of this one brings you back into your mind and you you, you're you're brought through a scenario and you have to visualize it and then kind of after you visualize this I don't know say we're on the beach and we're you're walking and then what do you see what do you see in the sky um it, it brings the like creativity and then at the same time as it's like a meditation because you're not physically thinking about yourself. You're being mindful of this current present scenario experience that you're doing afterwards, when you put it on paper, then you can kind of analyze it and, and look at these shapes, these colors, these uh, affirmations that you may have have come up in your subconscious through this visualization. And even if you can't discern like, okay, I put, I put a number three and it's because that's my level of stress. Like, that's not how you're going to analyze it. It, Mm -hmm. Like if you put the number three, it could mean something totally different. You can make the analyze, like when you analyze it, you can make the meaning for yourself and you know, your body, you know, your mind. And when you allow yourself to tap into this unconscious, when you look back on it, again, visually, you can kind of understand where you're coming from with this, even if you can't like analyze it like a psychologist would. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, we do have all of the answers within us. I mean, ultimately. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's amazing. I love that. So you talked about some art therapy techniques can you share some drama therapy techniques with us so because I haven't done the drama therapy master's program yet I'm not a professional in this okay but it doesn't mean I haven't 
learned it through other things or done my own research. Mm -hmm. um, so some of the techniques that are widely used is um, like a lot of role play where you'll you'll take either take on the personality or whatever the emotions of a situation. I could play grief or I could play someone in my conf in, in the conflict that I'm having. Um, and then there's also vis visualization where you're kind of guided with someone to visualize the scenario, go through the scenario, um, whether it's reliving the either traumatic or stressful situation that you had a problem with and taking a different course of action and living these experiences to see what could what you could do for next time or just visualizing it and seeing it from a different perspective a perspective that is not yourself if i was looking at this through the lens of my five-year-old self would i look at it the same way another one that like is like movement to express yourself through movement through your body and do it in an experimental way. You're being curious, you know, instead of um, needing to find a solution right away, you're exploring everything. And that taking that curiosity into whatever healing method you're doing, if, and if you're doing through drama therapy, it's very needed to be curious. That's when you can get a more holistic healing in drama therapy or in any therapy is when you're curious and you're curious about not just one aspect, but every aspect, um, whether it be, you know, emotional, whether it be physical, financial, social, uh, sexual. So yeah, in drama therapy, it, it's really using the body and the movement. Um, one of the things that I've done, and I've done this through clown work is working colors through my body, working, um, the directions like north east south and west the elements i working animals like all of these physical things that i will work through my body when i say work through my body I, I take the moment i imagine and i feel the color red go throughout my body and how does the color red feel in my body and i and i i might red could be for someone something like rage and they're feeling very enraged with the color red someone can feel very soothed with the color red it could be passion um so again it's something that's different for everybody and it's tapping your subconscious when you're moving these colors these directions that don't have an inherent meaning just yet your your mind is like what what does this mean <laughs> why mm -hmm. are we doing this so it's not associating anything with it right now. And then when you move these things through your body, then can you see, oh, like, I can associate this feeling with this color and this direction. What could this mean? And then exploring that further. Very interesting. That's really cool. Is it kind of like, so... I'm going off your example of like the color mm -hmm. red and moving around. And sometimes we can't tap into the subconscious mind because our conscious mind is so busy, right? It's just like chattering and filtering everything. So do you mm -hmm. feel like doing the exercise of like seeing like, okay, the red's in my body and now I'm moving around. Like it's kind of keeping your conscious mind occupied so that you can access the subconscious mind. Like how does that science so, really work? <laughs> yeah. So actually, um, one of my, my favorite things when I was doing my clowning, um, my teacher said, the brain is stupid. It doesn't know. In this case, it doesn't know. So put your brain aside, put it on pause. You're using your gut feeling. Your gut feeling is what is, what is important, which is your intuition. So your brain might be saying, oh, this movement is not the correct movement. This, you're, you're dumb for doing this movement. You don't want to listen to your brain. It doesn't know what, what's going on. So absolutely, you're pushing aside your conscious to bring out this unconscious 
this gut feeling, this, your inner dance, um, specifically with clown, these are the terms that we, we would use. Um, but by doing so, by allowing yourself to explore, to be curious, to drop the, the critical thinking that we so often and everyday scenarios have to use, you know, we have to be critical about everything. We have to, you know, be serious about everything. Allowing this to just kind of be dropped and allowing yourself to have fun, to explore your body in different ways that you would never do on a normal basis um, really allows yourself to reach a deeper part inside of you, even if you're, you're not conscious about it while doing it. It's happening still. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so cool. And so while you're doing this, because as you said, you're working towards becoming a drama therapist. Now, mm -hmm. this is going to be like a one on one session. So like, while the person is, is doing this, like, the therapist is then like taking notes of like what they're seeing? Or is it like, how, how does the session roll out as a drama therapist? So again, we're, we're moving away from the more Western style of therapy. So we're not sitting there taking notes, but okay. instead we're engaging with them. Mm -hmm. um, we, and when we observe, we might not be taking notes, but we're definitely taking mental notes. Um, and we might engage with them and question, okay, when you did this, uh, what did it bring up? And then kind of analyzing it with them and going through these motions, these feelings. Um, and as trauma is really held in the body, you know, or even stress, everything is held in the body. Um, things might come and surface without them even knowing why. So then, you know, the therapist would be there to help guide that person through these feelings that are surfacing for what seems like an unknown reason. Um, but it's really when you're re when you reconnect with your body, you're opening up this shell of things that you may have hidden, things that you may have pushed aside. Um, so I, I think the idea that we're we're not above the person, we're not there to like control the session, but more alongside them, guiding and helping them through it more so um, is is more the approach that is taken with drama therapists, um, which again, is something that why I want to do it too, is uh, it really connects or goes with the whole holistic aspect of, um, you know, connecting with your body and mind, tapping that unconscious, and that's how you can truly heal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm very intrigued by it. Like, it sounds really interesting makes me excited for the future. I don't know, because it's relatively new, right? So I don't know, I just get excited when I hear of like these new things and these new, you know, changes that could be brought where people can, you know, have that whole holistic approach and then really do something that is beneficial for themselves without mm -hmm. thinking that, yeah, we, we need to do it this way. And if I can't do it this way, then there's something wrong with me. And then it's just almost making the problem worse, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And that like, Another, you said that it's new and, th and that's the thing. It's, it's not necessarily new. It's just, we don't have that in Northern Ontario. Mm. Um, so you can okay. access drama therapists in Toronto and Montreal, uh, but anything beyond that, people are like, what the heck is that? <laughs> right, right. Okay. Classic Northern Ontario. We're always like behind the trends, right? Well, not Absolutely. the trends, but we're behind everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On your website, you mentioned, and, and I love it, you said, we create our experiences and our genetics, and that this could be observed by doing the clown. And now you mentioned the clown a little bit, but can you elaborate on that with us? Yeah, so it's like, it's known that, like, our personality and stuff is built, yes, through genetics, but also with our experiences. And a lot of these things are kept in the unconscious mind and body. Um, so when you're doing clown, and like I said, when you drop your brain, you're, you're not using your brain, you're using your gut feeling, you're able to tap into these different parts of yourself that 
doesn't that don't usually surface, but they're still there and they might have a background role in your everyday life. You're just not conscious about it. So it, it's really the idea that in our everyday life, we are being guided with our genetics, with our experiences. It, it does affect how we will become who we are. Um, but also that it's something that when you're aware of it, you can also learn to not necessarily change it, but utilize it in a way that will benefit you. Um, like just for an example, I'm a very sensitive person. And for the longest time, that was a flaw, right? I, I was, I would cry a lot. I was the, the, the baby, like big, Baby Lala in French, the kids mm -hmm. would call me because I would cry often. But once I learned that that's part of myself, um, there was experiences that led to that, but inherently I'm just a sensitive person and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I can now look at my sensitivity as a strength. I'm able to connect better with people. I'm able to feel myself deeper than someone else might. Um, and so I'm able to yes, feel my emotions intensely, but there's, there's positives that come with that. I, when I feel my emotions intensely, I know that I'm passionate about something. I know it gives me signs um, and it's telling me that either this is or is not the right way for me. So when we are created from our experiences and genetics, but we can also create from them as well depending on how you look at it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. And, you know, I mean, you're not alone. And I, I feel like a lot of people, there are a lot of sensitive people out there and I feel like it's becoming like more accepted and it's just, it's okay. Right. And like the whole term highly sensitive person, I'm hearing mm -hmm. HSP all over the place. I don't know if you're, you're hearing that too, but it's just like, yeah. we're trying to normalize it and to tell people like, it is okay. It could actually be a strength right? And like really being connected with our intuition, which helps guide us, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, that's really great. You also have a growth journal with your yes. book. Do you want to tell us about the growth journal? Yeah. So after I finished writing the book, I was like, I need to continue. This is not mm -hmm. like the end of like how to help yourself. Yes, there, there's these techniques that you can learn, but I like the idea of questioning and being curious, like I said, about yourself. So in my growth journal, and I'll show it here. Beautiful. Yeah. Whoever's watching, um, if you're listening, oh my goodness, I'm like tongue tied right now. <laughs> you can view the journal on our YouTube channel. There we go. <laughs> yes. Um, so with this one, it, the idea of journals, you know, a lot of people are, are turned off on journals and they're, they're, I can't write every day about my experience. And it's like, that doesn't have to be mm -hmm. what a journal is. So with this one, I, I really emphasize the fact that you choose what you want. You know, it's not like numbered, like you have to do one before two. It's separated in categories. So there's self-esteem, positivity, healthy relationships, overcoming challenges, identity, managing emotions, changing your limited mindset, and self-care. So whatever you're feeling that day, if you want to explore yourself, and you explore these diff in different categories. And even if you're not writing in the journal, and you just read the prompt, that's going to help you. Because either way, you're going to have that question come up in your mind, and you're going to your mind's going to want to answer it. It's not going to let, let things just, that's the question. And then on to the next thing, it's going to want right. to, to go further. So, mm -hmm. um, so for example, one of the questions is what's the traumatic experience that you've been through? Um, what have you learned from this traumatic experience and how can you, how can you help others with what you've learned? So it's, it's taking something you're exploring. Yes. Okay. I've been through these traumatic experiences, but then it's coming into a perspective. Okay. 
yeah, I guess I did learn something from it. It's not all bad. There is something good that came out of it. And then even further, how can I help others? Like it's bringing a, a more positive or neutral perspective on a bad situation. Um, so throughout the journal, um, not only is there the questions and like a little space to write in, you know, it's not a lot, you're not writing a whole novel. Mm -hmm. um, there's also space to draw, uh, if you want to do point form, if you want to just scribble, whatever you, however you want to answer this question is up to you. And there's no right or wrong way. Um, so within this journal, it, it's really to explore yourself, your emotions, your relationships, and, and um, again, going, going through and asking these questions towards it, to yourself, even if you're not writing it down, it still gets you thinking. Um, and I think that's part of why I wanted to create this journal, um, is to kind of put the questions that I either use in my counseling sessions with my clients or with myself in a situation uh, that I'm having anxiety or I'm overthinking and I, and I don't know where to go. Um, it, it's the idea of sitting back and asking these questions and being curious about your emotions that allows you to accept them better rather than being shamed and guilt to, to have that you're feeling these emotions. You're able to look at it from a curious lens and, um, it'll be easily acceptable when you're able to have fun with it. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. put these pressures on yourself. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That sounds amazing. That's like a real, like healing guide. It feels like, and like healing process that I love the way that you put that because yeah, our brain is always going to seek those answers. And so even if we feel like we're not writing yet, or like, we're not ready, we don't want to write it, but can we just entertain the question? And even if the answer to the question doesn't come right away because we're so busy, we're thinking about something else, but can you reread that question every day? <laughs> like mm -hmm. one little sentence every day to just like get your mind to start thinking about it. And um, our subconscious mind is really through repetition too, right? So if we keep saying it, like our subconscious is working even while our conscious mind is busy. So if we introduce mm -hmm. that into our mind, then it's kind of working on the background and those kind of like, awarenesses or those ideas or those like aha moments will come to us like the answers will end up coming and sometimes it could be in like the most random ways that we just like have a thought so thank you so much for like everything that you shared today this was really so incredible and before we wrap up do you want to let everybody know where they can find you where they can find your books if they want to learn more so um for my books it's easier to search in my name so you can find my book on Amazon by searching Lauren Kearney, Lauren with a Y. <laughs> okay. Um, but they are both available on Amazon. Caress's Dress is also available on Barnes and Nobles. Okay. Um, as for like my, my social media, I am on Facebook. You can search in Lauren Kearney. I have my Facebook page like that. And I also have a TikTok that I, I do videos through. Um, also Lauren dot Kearney. Um, so if you, you search in my name on Amazon, it, it will be there, um, under my name. Okay. And it's a pretty unique name too. So there's not in any other books with that. <laughs> right. Well, with the why, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. the uniqueness there. Amazing. Well, all of those links will be in the show notes of this episode too. So be sure to check them out. Lauren, thank you so much for being here today and sharing all of your value with us. Thank you for having me. This has been such a great opportunity. Uh, thank you for what you do as well. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, thank you.